Brian, and I want to start this little tutorial here off just showing you how to make a really basic web page. You know, I remember doing Codecademy and other stuff online and thinking, okay, I kind of know how to code now. Like, I do stuff on Codecademy and I'm like typing stuff away and it's doing stuff. And then I realized, wait, you know, how am I going to get this to actually like appear on my screen? So, what we're going to do is just walk through a real, real brief tutorial on how to first, like, you know, just go from, hey, I don't have a text editor to, hey, I can actually tech, tech, type something in my text editor and make it appear on the screen. So first thing you want to do is go to your browser, ignore all this stuff, and you want to go to something like Sublime Text 3, 2, it doesn't really matter. You do the Sublime Text download. I'm not going to actually download it on my computer because I already have it on my computer. So you know you need to download Sublime Text 3. This is free. It will continue asking you if you want to buy the product. You can keep saying no. I feel bad for the guys at Sublime Text. Uh, I don't know how they make any money, but hopefully some nice people out there are actually paying for this awesome text editor they have. But unfortunately, I'm not one of them. So, okay. I'm assuming you have your text editor. You can pause the video, whatever you need to do. Download this. It takes a whole maybe five minutes, probably a lot less. Uh, now, okay, you got your cool text editor. So let's open up the text editor. Oops, I got something in there already. Uh, let's see here. So I got Sublime Text. How about a... We're just going to close this off. So let's just close this out. Close, get out of there. Get out of there. Now, let's make a new folder on our desktop. So I made a new folder. We're going to call this... Uh, what am I going to call this? Rename it something cool. Uh, I can't think of anything cool, so I'm just going to name it First Web Page. Really generic, horrible title, but is what it is. So I'm going to do this simple move here. I'm going to drag this web page into my Sublime Text. Shabam. Now I have an empty Sublime Text folder. You could have also gone to Sublime Text, and you could have gone in there and file, and you could have gone to open, and you could have gone into your file directory on desktop and opened it up this way. Uh, we didn't do that. I did it the cool way. So what you're going to want to do first, click on here. This is great. We had an empty folder, but it doesn't do us a whole lot of good, does it? So let's put a file in here. Now the first file you're always going to make, now I'm going to Command S to save this file because it's important how I save this file. This is going to be an index.html file. HTML is for hypertext markup language. This is letting us know that we're saving this as an HTML file. If you don't put HTML here and you put like index dot, you know, doc or whatever you would do, you, it's not going to work. It's not going to know to render this page as HTML. So this is hypertext markup language. Okay, save that. Now, click under my folder and I see, oh cool, I got a little index.html tag here. Now one of the cool things about Sublime Text is you can type in HTML tab. Oh, look at that. I got a freaking HTML a skeleton right there. Super simple. One of the reasons why people in general like Sublime Text. It's pretty easy, I feel like, for beginners. Uh, other people use different types of editors. Atom, uh, Vim, Emacs. Those are a little more, I feel like those are a little more advanced. This is totally fine to use. Use it at work. Use it at home. It's fun. For this title, let's do uh, first web page to keep in line with my generic theme I got going on here. So sweet. Uh, first thing, okay, this is declaring the doc type. So we say, okay, this is a doc type. What kind is it? HTML. <laughs> and uh, there are opening and closing tags for everything. If you notice, there's an HTML here. It's open. Open means it doesn't have this slash on it. Now, it closes down here. In the middle of that is the head. The head is where you put things like the title. Maybe you want to put some data about what kind of page it is. Maybe if you're getting more advanced and you want to add dependencies, like you want to have a CSS file or a link to a JavaScript file or most likely a bootstrap file, guess what? That's also going to go in the head. It's like the head, kind of the head telling the body, hey, 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 body, here. I want you to put all this stuff that I can use from the head in here. We're not going to do anything with the head right now. We're just going to focus on the body. Uh, what's something we should put in here? Every page needs a title, right? So H1. I'm going to tab. Oh, didn't do it. So put H1. Guess what else we need? A closing H1. See a pattern here? Everything 
open, close. Let's put something less generic in here than my title. Awesome web page. Sweet. Now I'm cooking. Cooking with fire here. Okay. Now, what else am I going to put in here? I don't know. Maybe like a paragraph tag. What do you think is going to happen there? If you said closing tag, you're right. If you said ham sandwich, well, you're, you're absolutely wrong and this class may be a little too fast for you. So l let's keep going here. And what should I put in this P tag here? Maybe some made up language. Now this is another cool thing here. I hope this works. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, it does work. So if you add something like lorem here, uh, this is like a script that is a like nonsense language. Many people they basically use it as a placeholder when they're just trying to say, hey, I, you know, I, I know something's going to go here. Like I need some paragraph. I don't really know what's going to be in that paragraph. Let me just put some placeholder text. So this is really old placeholder text, lorem ipsum. This is really cool. You just type lorem, tab, and bam, you got your, your page. Okay, sweet. So I'm off to a pretty good start here. And let's go, let's actually open this up. Let's see what this kind of fugly looking page looks like. And we can do that by, well, can we do that? <laughs> we can do it. I know we can do it. We're going to, okay, so I left click on this. Or if you have a Mac, you do the double finger click on here and you open in browser. Now let's see what I got. Sweet. Look at that. Now that's a freaking web page with a bunch of nonsense text right here. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, you say, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, it's one of the sweetest web pages you've probably ever seen. But uh, you know what could make this even more awesome, more amazing, perhaps stunning, visually stunning? It's CSS. CSS, HTML and CSS go together like, like, uh, like a guy like me and bad analogies because I'm really bad with them. So let's try to add, well, let's, let's try, let's do, let's, let's do it. Let's add some CSS on this puppy. You could add a new folder or you could add a new file. Um, I think it's, it's a little cleaner to add a new folder just to get used to um, when you have more than one HTML file, which you inevitably will have when you begin making larger, more complicated pages. You don't want to have just all your files just hanging out there. Um, index HTML doesn't need its own folder. I think CSS uh, definitely needs its own folder. We're going to call this folder style folder because that's what it is. Okay. So style folder. Now to actually add a file in style and that rhymed. If you didn't know that, uh, let's add a new file. And that file is going to be called style.css. You can see I'm a really creative guy here. Style, style CSS, first web page, first web page. You can name it whatever, as long as it has that dot CSS. This is another really important thing. It has to have that CSS. Cascading style sheet. Cascading style sheet. If you don't have that, it won't know what you're writing in there. It won't know the kind of code you're writing. It's really important to have that um, appendage on there. Make sure it has its CSS. Okay, great. So now I have a CSS. I see. I have an empty CSS file, which is all good and dandy. But we'd really like to link to that CSS file. So we have these two files here. One is style.css. One is index.html. Index.html is going to use style.css. It's going to look back here to look for what um, kind of style to add to this page. This is a pretty blank page, even though it is very awesome. It is quite blank. Um, so let's go and link that to there. That's really important. Link. Whoa. So I just typed in link, hit tab, and this sublime text IntelliSense is uh, taking care of the rest for me. It's really nice. So you see this href. There's an href here. That's a reference. That's the link we're going to use. So this uh, particular file is in our style slash style dot CSS. Perfect, right? So now we have a link to our style slash style.css. Now let's see if this actually works. You know, so let's go in here and well, let's make this. Let's let's put it since this is an H1 tag, this is our title. Let's put an ID here. Now you have IDs and classes. IDs can only be used once. You can have an ID and you can name it um, awesome title. Now I couldn't put PID equals awesome title. I've already used the awesome title. I can make a P and make it a class because maybe I have more than one P tag and maybe I want them all to have the same kind of styling. So maybe I'll just say P class, uh, you know, um, body text, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, so I have one 
See, and this is what you're going to get on here a lot. You say, hey, thanks for trying Sublime. Do you want to buy this? You say, yeah, no thanks. Or you say, yeah, purchase it. And you're really nice to these guys. I mean, they've done a great job of giving this text editor out that everybody in the world seems to be using for free. So back to our IDs and classes. IDs use once. Classes you can use a bunch of times. And there's, there's a number of reasons why you want to maybe have an ID or a class. If you have a large amount of uh, HTML files that have a similar type of class that you want to put a similar style you want to have, you say, hey, each paragraph want to be like blue. And you don't want to put an ID on every paragraph and make them all blue. You want to just say, hey, I'm going to use this class. Make that class wherever you want something blue, and there you go. So let's go over here to our style.css. We have awesome title, body text. Style.css, uh, what, what was that one? I forget already. Whoa, awesome title. Awesome title. And you see how I have that cool hash right there? That's letting us know this is a an ID. The other one, I forget that one too. Man, it's pretty, it wasn't even that hard. Uh, body text. Perfecto. Awesome title. Let's put the color on that one to blue. Body text. Let's put the color on that one to red. Sure. Hey, so here I got my hash saying, hey, awesome title. That makes means it's, it's an ID. The dot makes it sure it knows this is a class. Body text color red. Now, let's see what happens when you go back to our page and refresh it. Oh, wow. It worked on the first try here. So now I have this really cool blue awesome web page and this really awesome red. Ignore that. And this really awesome red text here. Now I have a pretty visually stunning web page and some really magnificent colors. Um, that's where we're going to end on this very brief lesson. And we're going to look at things like adding image tags, uh, some of the HTML5 class tags. We can have a title section in the next lesson. And we're going to really pick up from there. But for now, you can have some fun you know, learning how to actually make a page, looking your style to it, and beginning to actually see what you've done in the page. I think this is one of those things you can take Code Academy a bunch and think, you know, say, oh, okay, I got some stuff down. But then you say, well, wait, how do I get it on this text editor? And when I put on the text editor, well, then how does it actually show up here? And that kind of leads me to this. This is your, I'm in your browser, and I'm not actually at a website. As you can see, this is just serving, this is just serving that index.html file. So this is just serving my HTML file. And the reason why it's doing that is because it knows it's HTML hypertext markup language. So it's saying, okay, I'm going to look at this file, and I'm going to serve it over the browser, and I'm going to serve it through HTML. So I know that this is a, it is, I'm not serving like a dot doc. I couldn't do that. I'm going to serve this HTML that I'm on the HTML page. We're linking to the style sheet. So the whole brain of this operation is that index page where it's going to look, tell the links where to go to, say, hey, we have a link here to our style. We have some actual body markup language that I'm going to need you to um, render in the browser. So this is just an actual file. We're just rendering through the browser, and that's what it's doing. So that way you can write these static files that are rendered on your own browser. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, and see you next time. You're going to make even, even more stunning pages, if you can possibly believe it.